this video I want to look at the nomenclature that's used to uh, define different types of carbon nanotubes. So sometimes you'll hear carbon nanotubes described as either a 5-5 carbon nanotube or uh, there's a variety of numbers. You could have an 8-8 carbon nanotube. So this is a, is a rendering of an 8-8 carbon nanotube. So I want to look at where those numbers come from in carbon nanotube nomenclature. Now one way to think about a carbon nanotube would be it's a sheet of graphite that's been rolled up into a cylinder. And so if I imagine a hexagonal grid uh, as my sheet of graphite, and I'm going to bring that in here. So this is my graphite sheet laying flat. If I roll that uh, up, then I could have a carbon nanotube. Now I could roll this in a couple different ways. Um, I might be able to um, roll this into a cylinder by sort of wrapping it around this way, or I could roll it up. If I think of this as a sheet of paper rolling up, I could wrap, roll it up that way. And then I would get different types of nanotubes. So. Okay, so let's look at, uh, at doing that, and and uh, see what we get. And so one of the ideas is that you have to develop a numbering system uh, based on this graphite. Now it's not the same as a Cartesian coordinate system. I need to develop some type of coordinate system. So let's start with this point down here. I'm just going to call that uh, a zero coordinate. And, uh, and then if I move over here, this could be like my x coordinate. And this one, so this would be uh, one along the x axis. Make my brush just a little bit bigger. And um, it didn't go up in y at all, so that's a one zero a point one zero. Look at this point, and that's a um, two along the x-axis, but still zero on the y. This one is three along the x-axis, um, but zero on the y. Here's four zero five zero. Uh, oops, that looks like a six zero. This would be the coordinate six zero seven zero. Okay, uh, eight zero nine zero and ten zero. Okay, so now if I happen to roll this, if if let's say this was a piece of paper. Uh, our graphite sheet, um, and I roll this around this axis until the origin, the zero zero point, was on top of the ten zero point. You'd see that would form. Hopefully, see that would form a tube, uh, uh, and the name of this carbon nanotube would be a ten zero carbon nanotube. Okay, that one would be given the name of a 10 zero carbon nanotube. Now I don't, uh, I have two axes here and so let's look at trying to develop a coordinate system for the other axis. So if I move off in this direction, um, I could go straight up but it turns out that's uh, taking a bigger step than I was taking in this direction. So what I have to do is move from this point uh, to a corresponding point, and that would be um, this green one right here. And if I look at, this is uh, 0, 0. Remember, this is x, this is y. So let's give this a y coordinate now. So I would move up from 0, 0 to 0, 1. So now I'm moving in the y dimension of my grid. So this is 0, 2, 
2, okay? This one would be 0, 3. This one would be 0, 4. And 0, 5, okay? So that's in the y di dimension. Now, um, if I move from this point up, this point over here would be 1, 1. This one would be 1, 2. This point would be 1, 3. This one would be 1, 4. This one would be 1, 5. Okay? And then if I started from this one and started moving in this direction, I'd have 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, etc. So let's see if I can figure out where 5, 5 would be. So I can create a 5, 5 carbon nanotube. I'm starting from this point. I have to move up. So this would be 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, and 5, 5. Okay, so this is my 5,5 five location. So to create a carbon nanotube with 5,5 five orientation, I could go from uh, this point and roll up until this point was coincident uh, with the 5,5 five coordinate there. So I'd go from here over to the 1,1, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four and the 5-5. Five, five. So roll that until those were at the same point. Now, there's several different uh, orient ways you can orient, you can arrange your paper um, and still get the same result. And so um, it turns out that I could have, that every time, if you notice this pattern is going from a hexagon and then a line, and that's my 1-1 one, one point. And if I go through the corners of a, of a hexagon and then one more line segment, that's my 2-2 two, two point. So I can go through from corner to corner and then one more line segment, that would be my 3-3. Three, three. And so I can go here to 4-4. Four, four. So if you lo look for that pattern moving corner to corner, actually there's another way, an easier way, I could have created the 5-5 five, five tube and that's by rolling it around in this direction. Let's say I started with a this as my origin of 0, 0. Um, I know that this point would be 1, 1. This point would be 2, 2. This point would be 3, 3. Um, this would be 4, 4. And this point down here would be my 5, 5 coordinate. Okay, so I could have Oops, sorry, 5, 5. I could have rolled it uh, from here. I could have gone from here and lined it up until that one was coincident with the, um, with the 5, 5 position. And that actually is easier to, to roll. So I usually suggest you get some uh, transparency paper with uh, the, uh, this type of grid printed on it and practice creating several uh, different types of nanotubes to so try to create a 5-5 five five or an 8-8 eight eight, uh, nanotube and maybe a 10-0 and some of the other uh, types of nanotubes that you can create um, with this. You could even try to create uh, a chiral one and that will be rolling it at a certain angle. Now when you roll these, you got to make sure that the hexagons uh, in one place are lined up with another one. So this hexagon has to be coincident with um, uh, the hexagon down here. Okay, And so it's easier to do with a piece of uh, transparency paper to roll these up. Okay.